Hello, and welcome to the Sports Show with Bob Spino, where we are in the midst of the 2022 NBA and NHL playoffs. We're here with Bob live, returning to the Sports Show. How are you, Bob? Uh, a lot of health problems, but I'm hanging in there. Yeah, you and your brother are on this uh, bit of a journey when it comes to the health issues, Bob. I- I'm pretty concerned about you both. Yeah, I know. Um you know, I, I I know we didn't do it for a while and I wasn't pushing it too hard because I couldn't talk. Like even now it's not quite, you know, like it should be, but it's a lot better than it was. I mean, I could barely like even say a word. Um, you know, I went to the doctor and um, they wanted to do some tests. The darn lady couldn't find my vein on a blood test. So I just said, screw it. You know, um, but he put me, he gave me like something for my stomach, which he thinks is coming from that. So, but I don't know. Um, I threw up one day. It wasn't good. And uh, so I don't know. I'm trying to, trying to get it better, but hanging in there. I do hope you find more clarity, Bob, in terms of your health issues, because this right. has been an ongoing thing for you. And, you know, I know I, I, I think I can speak for everyone when in saying that we all hope that you, know, you and your brother both recover, get your wellness and health in order so that you can continue to participate in the sports show. Right. Right. Well, you know, me too. I was a little scared there, Rob, to be honest. Um, but hopefully I'm getting better and I feel a little better. So. Well, you're feeling a little better and you're here now and a little better is still a little better. Right. So, Bob, um, I do believe your brother Tony is joining us at some point. Well, he's actually eating. It's a supper time, so. Oh, that's fine. Well, I mean, we can jump right into it, my friend. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at these NHL and NBA uh, playoff series scores and uh, standings, and it seems like, for the most part, the entirety of both the NHL and the NBA playoffs have been really competitive. Yeah, I was driving to Pittsburgh the other night, so I didn't see game five of the Celtic game. And I'm thinking, you know, we're going to win, and then we blow it. Like somebody told me we got a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter and lost the game. So, And I think Milwaukee's coming back on us. Now, we were actually winning tonight. But, um, you know, we can't be losing home games. You keep losing home games, you're not going to win the series. And I'm worried tonight. I really am, you know. Well, as we speak, Bob, it looks like we are dealing with a score between the Celtics and the Bucks at uh, second quarter, 537 to go. The Celtics lead by five. So, I mean, obviously Celtics in must win territory. Yep. Uh, but anything else stand out outside of the Celtics Bucks series that you feel really deserves attention? Um, I called Golden State in six. I think that's going to happen. Um, I called Phoenix in seven. I thought Dallas was going to win all three games at home, and they did. They're good. They're not going to win, though, because the games, the seventh game's in Phoenix, and it's really hard to do. 90% of the time, the home team wins a game seven. So, uh, and, you know, Phoenix is the best team. So, I, but the playoffs have been great. I mean, they've been close and competitive. I'm glad we beat the Nets four straight. That was awesome. Um, but, yeah, I mean, things have been going well. And by the way, Kansas won the national title. We haven't done it in a while. So, and I picked them. It does feel like a lifetime ago. And yes, indeed, Bob, you called the championship winner. Yep. Uh, I, I'm not shocked. I, I mean, Kansas looked like uh, world beaters with some of those athletes. And mm-hmm. yeah, you saw them uh, get it done and you called it and we didn't. So uh, kudos to you, Bob. Mm, well, you know what? Carolina looked like they were going to win at halftime. They were up 15. It, it didn't look good. So, but, you know, Kansas stuck with it and they won. Yeah, Kansas replicated what they uh, did to come back in the previous game and they got it done. But, uh, yeah, you know that, that just highlights the fact that uh, here we are in May and now we're in the playoffs of the uh, of half the sports. And, and what about baseball? Uh, a lot of games have already taken place. So what's your thoughts on you know, the mainstays here, Mets and Yankees and whatnot? Well, well, the Yankees are God's team, and God's team don't lose. And I mean, there were games that they should have lost. I mean, the Indians had them beat um, in game two. Um, Toronto had them beat. The, the umpire took a home run away. And then the Yankees, the minute they took the pitcher out, I knew. You know, the guy was throwing a one-hitter. 
They take them out. The Yankees tie the game, and then they win it in the bottom of the ninth against Toronto. Judge hits a grand or a three-run homer. It's unbelievable. And somebody put today they're going to win 120 games. That they're on a pace right now for that. You know, yeah, that sounds like my brother with the Dodgers. He thinks they're going to win 120 every year. But, um, you know, I don't know. Um, the Mets are good, but they don't have enough hitting, and uh, they need. They need to do that. I mean, they need to get some hitting. I was in Pittsburgh this week. I drove myself. I saw that. By the way, folks, uh, we will be posting to the uh, Sports Show Instagram account the photograph of Bob with Pittsburgh Pirate. Who? Oh, the manager for the Dodgers. That was um, that was Dave Roberts. Oh, I didn't see the picture yet, folks. Uh, so, so I apologize. <laughs> um. What happened was I decided last week I wanted to go and nobody wanted to go. So, you know what? I said, you know, I'm just going to go myself. I have more fun sometimes doing that. So I rented a car and I drove at 3.30 in the morning. I left. The game was a day game. And here I'm thinking, you know, they're going to have batting practice. And, and Gary Adams, who's been on here, called Dave Roberts for me and got me a ticket. And he said, but I don't think they're going to have batting practice for a pass, you know. So I get there and I'm, I'm hoping, and it was a gorgeous day, gorgeous. And, you know, 9.30 in the morning, no ticket office is open yet. And I'm acting like a little dummy kid. And all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, I'm Bob. I'm not a dummy kid. So I walked up to the window and said, I want credentials. I go, I used to work at ESPN and Dave Roberts is going to weave them for me. I want them. So the guy in the security, they sent me around back. Now they're getting, oh, we, okay, that's different. They send me around back and the guy goes, wait a minute, don't even let him go through the metal detector. I like him. So they walk me in. I'm in the back room and I'm waiting. And like Dave, Rock, the guy, I tell the guy at the window, my whole story. And he goes, oh, we got the passes. We just don't think they're going to have batting practice. They canceled it. And I'm just sitting there like, oh boy. So, but he made me stay there for a long time. And the longer he made me stay, I realized. I'm like, he's going to let me in. All of a sudden the guy comes up and goes, do you know when you said you're from Jersey? I go, right. He goes, did you used to go to the Meadowlands all the time? I went, yeah. For the next games, he goes, we have a guy here named, named um, Kevin that knows you. He likes you. And the head security guy goes, I like this guy. We're going to get him a pass and walk him in. They walk me on the field. And Dave Roberts comes over and gives me a hug. No batting practice, no nothing. And then Dave goes, wait a minute. And he went to talk to his friend for like 15 minutes. And he came back. He goes, he goes, Bob, tell me about your show. He goes, Gary told me. And I explained everything to him and what we do. And he goes, oh, that's great. And I was telling him a little bit about what Tony did. Because even though he knows Tony, you know, when you're a player or a coach, you don't know what the trainer is. Doing. And I told him what we do and what my brother does. And he was going, that's great. And I go, I drove six hours to see you. And I wasn't feeling the best. He goes, I'm so, I'm so um impressed he, he was it was a compliment to him and he goes i want to come on he's going to come on the show rob and the dodgers are out there i'm taking pictures with everybody and it was and then the kids came over and they were asked do you know mookie Betts? do you know this one do you know that and i'm like i'm handing out the cards to the kids everything worked out perfect i couldn't have asked for a better thing i mean that's just a wonderful experience to hear uh you relay to to, to me and the audience bob i mean that's a beautiful thing i mean that's amazing uh, amazing thing to hear. And I'm so glad you got to go through it, got to experience it. And it, it's a testament to your place in the realm of sports. I mean, this as wondrous and amazing as that uh, experience yeah. is, yeah. it's just one of a just endless number of experiences yeah. you've had throughout the years. Since I was a kid. Yeah. And you know what? The guy remembered me and I told him, I go, I'm going to go see you when you play the Mets. He goes, okay, call me. I'll take care of you. And an, another guy, when I went into the stands, looked at me and went, I saw you outside looking for a booth, you know, a window. I go, yeah, I asked you if you knew where the, where the will call desk was. And he goes, wow, you got on the field? I go, yeah. So another guy comes up to me and goes, I heard what you said to Dave. I go, you heard us talking? He goes, yes, you were talking how much you hate the Yankees. And and Dave, because Dave grabbed my arm and goes, we're going to beat them. <laughs> right? And then like, he goes, I hate him too. And all the Dodger fans were loving me. I sat right behind the dugout. It was great, Rob. 
And Craig Kimball, the closer for the Dodgers, he was a great closer for the Braves for 10 years. As I'm walking out, his parents are walking in, and the guard stopped me and goes, introduce me to him. And I go, your son's a great player. The Braves should have never got rid of him. And the mother looks at me and goes, you're damn right, they shouldn't have. <laughs> I was just like, it was so funny. I mean, just great. think of all the uh, players, teams, and people you can win over by your hatred for the Yankees. I mean, there's yeah. a lot there, a lot yeah. available. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And even the cops, the cop took pic- the picture. He took the picture of us. And I go, yeah, because I was on the field. He walked in and goes, oh, I'm in such a good mood today. And it's such a beautiful day. You can do what you want. By the way, Bob, I do want to inform you that uh, a commenter on the page uh, just uh, mentioned a little bit a while ago while you were talking uh, to, to get better. Okay, and I, I, I mean, I echo that as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I well, wow. any anything else go down in Pittsburgh uh, in, in, um, in all these exchanges? <laughs> it's it. I, you know what? It was just an amazing day. I took pictures. I even went out to the Allegheny and took pictures because it's right behind the stadium, and people were so nice to me. And like, if I tried that in New York, they, they wouldn't have let me in. But people in the Midwest, one thing I know, um, they are nicer. You know, like the minute they know, they'll let you in. They'll, they'll treat you great. You know, in New York, I would have got beat up in the back out. But I mean, but not there. It, it, it's, it was really great. They were awesome. I had so much fun. And I'm glad I went. And I, and I got home in three hours, a six hour trip. <laughs> Late at night, me and the trucks are still looking for me. I was blowing by them. I was blowing by them. So, so Bob, are, are, they, are they nicer or are they just different? They're nicer because they're still old fashioned Americans. They're still good people. You know, I think the people in, in the cities have gotten spoiled and they're not, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate, um, but they have attitudes, you know, their way of being nice is to flip you off. You know, in, in LA, their way of being nice is to shoot your car. <laughs> so that was one of their nicer days, but there they're so down to earth and so nice. Yeah. They were great to me. They were really great to me. And I loved, and thank you, Pittsburgh, for that. I mean, the stadium's amazing. I love the stadium. I was taking pictures. The Pirates, nobody took batting practice. And I'm thinking the Pirates need batting practice. But they end up winning the game. They hit three homers in the game. Sometimes the best batting practice is taking a rest and not, not overworking. That's the best workout sometimes. So, But it was great, Rob. I had so much fun. I did. Oh, it sounds like it was just uh, incredible. And I'm sure that it's going to bear fruit for you in the future. No doubt about it. I think it's going to help the show too. Uh, I absolutely agree. And I look forward to, uh, to, to go to walking there with you, my friend. So it, probably any moment now, uh, Mr. E and E Kip are going to come on and talk about the NHL playoffs. Uh, for those new to the show, uh, these two gentlemen are our resident hockey experts, uh, E. Kip is a uh, really uh, hardcore Islanders fan, and we have Mr. E, who uh, allies with the Tampa Bay Lightning. So they're going to come down. Uh, they're going to come in pretty soon, Tampa and Bay they're going to break it down uh, to a detail, which uh, I'm always impressed with. Uh, a- any comments about the uh, playoffs before the, the guests come on? Um, the Rangers, I think it's 2-2, two to two, right, in the second period. It was. We are um, in the second period with a minute left. It's tied 3-3, 3-3. With, with the Penguins okay. in the lead in the series. They three have to, to win. Win. The Penguins don't win the night they're out. If they give the Rangers the home ice back, I think they'll win. The Rangers will win. Um, but tonight's the night to take, to take them out. They took they stole the home ice. So And they're tough at home. They score a lot of goals, and you got to stay with them. They're not as good as they used to be, but they're good enough. And um, – my Bruins are still in it, but we can't win a road game. We, we, we haven't come close to beating Carolina, Carolina. We got to win one. Hopefully, it'll be like the year when we won it all. You know, we played Vancouver in the championship. We won three at home. We lost three on the road. And then game seven was in Vancouver, but we won it. Let's hope that happens the next game for Boston, because I'm a Boston fan. So, but yeah, um, no, they're, they're, they're in good shape, Bob. They, you know, they just got to win the game. It's got to win the game. T- Tampa came close to being. Uh... Uh, knocked out as the defending champion, uh, but they pulled out the overtime win. Yeah. Oh, they did win last night. Oh, they did. They uh, scraped by. They won the game, and it's uh, a tied series three to three. Is the seventh game in Tampa or Toronto? Uh, this That's a good question, Bob. It's Toronto. I'm sure Mr. E knows. 
Uh, our right? resident expert who has not yet arrived, but they will be with us shortly. Um, um, I think it's on Toronto. That oh, I'm going to go that. Yes, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say it's in Toronto based on the records. Hopefully I'm correct on that. Yeah. Yes, the Maple Leafs are the two seed. Yeah, I think the three not, seed. I don't know why this yeah. chart did not reveal I think the gonna number of the Bay. seed. Wow. I think they're going to beat Tampa Bay. Um, they. You see Toronto taking it at home? Yes, they do. They can score. And you know what? I met somebody that was friends with their best players. We almost had them on the show. And also, there's more good news. I met somebody, George Scott Jr., whose father played with the Red Sox. He's going to bring on a lot of stars. I met him on Twitter. He's going to do the show. He's a great guy, and he's going to bring on stars, major leaguers. So that's great. And we're going to do another show. We're going to have Gary start rounding up the people. <clears throat> and we'll get my brother on. And I think my brother needs it because he's really down. You know, I do. I do. So, so Bob, can let's let's break that uh, let's break that news one more time to the audience. That, that this is a big uh, this is a big development for the show. Who's coming on? Okay, George Scott Jr. His father played with the Red Sox when I was a little kid. And he came on Twitter and I go, I used to emulate you when I was swinging, when I was a little kid, you know, you're your dad. And he liked it. And I go, I have a show. And he goes, you get back to me and I'll get them to come on. I go, we're just starting out. So we can't really, he goes, don't worry about the pay. They want to come on. So he's going to bring on a lot of stars. And that's big. And then we got Gary doing, we're going to do big shows. We're going to do football, baseball, some basketball. We're going to get them all. So it's coming. And I'm, t I'm texting Nigel. He hasn't gotten back. I'm going to keep texting until he does. So we're going to try to get Michael Jordan on this show. And people want to come on. Oh, one more thing, Rob. The other day, the other day, and we'll talk a little bit about the NFL because the draft was so good for the Jets. I know you hate them, and I'm not a big fan, but they're great with this draft. This draft was great. And I know somebody has played basketball with Dan Gardner. And I ran into him again, and he was always like, I'm cooler than you. I'm in high school. I'm... But one of the kids went to Morris Knowles that, with him in Denville, then ended up with, with the Jets. And he became friends with him, and he introduced him to all the Jets. Now the guy knows the Jets. He's older. He's a cop now. Okay? But I ran into him the other day, got his number. He's going to take me down. I'm going to hang out with Woody Johnson. I'm going to get in on, on the field, and I'm, I'm going to talk to Ricky Manning. He goes, oh, I met Ricky. You know him? I go, damn right I know him. Right. And, and um, he's going to take me out to hang out with Zach Wilson. So we're going to have some steak and, sh and stuff together. But um, I mean, I'm going to hang out with the players and, and then they're going to take me to a Yankee game. I'm going to meet Aaron judge. I'll spit on him, but I'll meet him. <laughs> it was a joke. That was it's a joke. joke please. It's a joke. <laughs> but don't go, don't let's not take that too seriously. No. I mean, I, I hate the Yankees, but not that much. And, you know, I mean, I have some stories because Aaron and Cashman had a, had a big tiff. They didn't re-sign him. He wanted a lot of money. And Cashman disrespected him. He's just like, you ain't the best outfielder out there. He goes, what? He goes, I can go sign somewhere else. And he went, okay. So if the Yankees start losing or he just may walk on his own because the Yankees don't want to pay him. You know, I mean, I guess if the Yankees keep winning, they can't trade him at the deadline. But at the same time, huh, that means he's going to walk if they don't give him money. He'll win his ring and leave. That's what, that's what he'll do. So, I mean, but, but I hope they don't win. I hope they don't win. But like yeah. you said, Bob, the Mets are, they, the Mets are doing well. I mean, they, they, yes. you were pretty stout about the fact that they should be better this year. Yeah, and they're going to be. I mean – they are, but they still don't have an extra bat or two. They didn't get that power hitter, and I think it's going to come back on. To me, they, they remind me of the 90s Braves. Every year we win, and then we lose to the Yankees in the World Series because we can't hit. They're a better hitting team than us, and that's exactly what it was. So, you know, I still think they need more hitting. I do. How are we doing, Rob, the Celtics? So the Celtics, as we speak, and by the way, folks, I uh, regret to inform you that there is a high probability that Ekip will not be joining us tonight. 
but that's not a guaranteed fact. And Mr. E should be joining us shortly. Oh, the professor will fill us in. The professor will uh, fulfill his duty dutifully and <laughs> completely inform us of everything that is uh, happening in the NHL playoffs. So right now, Bob, you're looking at 42-39 with 3.49 to go in the second quarter. Uh, the Celtics lead the Bucks. Actually, I just got an update, Rob, on it because I got it on my phone. It's halftime. We're up by 10. Boston's up by 10. 53-43. And that's why refreshing the page is an important endeavor <laughs> when you need to look up the score. Yes. Yes. But I'll tell you what, Rob, I, it's, it's to me, it's, and I'm sure, I know my friend Joe is, is listening, okay? Buffalo Bill. Um, to me, I, it never ceases to amaze. Like, even my brother couldn't believe it when I was texting him at the game. He goes, how did you get on the field? And I go, well, I go, there was no bad. He goes, there was no bad. He knew. And then I had to explain it to him. He couldn't believe it. It's just old, young, sick, healthy. For whatever reason, Rob, it still happened. You, you know what I'm saying? And I had so much fun. The Pirates treated me great. They did. I mean, and I'm going back there because Arizona's coming. And I know the manager for the, for the Diamondbacks. I'll get on the field again. Did you put you? Did you find that picture? I had the picture. Yes, I do have the picture. Okay, uh, I got it. I have it. It's going to be uploaded uh, definitely uh, tonight on the Instagram page, Bob, for everyone to see. I mean, this is this is again amazing development, uh, establishing the connections needed. I mean, you're getting it done, Bob. You've you've gotten it done. We've had some uh, significant guests in the past, and we're going to keep going here. You know, we're going right. to get Tony on soon. Mister E's coming on soon. And uh, guys like Nigel, uh, Miguel, and other stars will be joining us. Uh, you know what I thought was funny? They the showed future a to come. picture of the old players. Bob Dandridge was one of them. That was really cool. I mean, the the Bucks are still they're still in. I mean, they're they're alive. You know, <laughs> yeah, they are. But I don't want them to be because I'm a Boston fan. But yeah, I get it. And you know, I'll tell you, like. I, I really don't know why all this stuff's happening, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. It, it was just a lot of fun. I just had fun, you know, and I will again, because I'm going to, I'm going to go back there. I told him I'm going back. So, I mean, isn't that what it's all about? I mean, it's sports, Bob. Yep. You're having fun. Yep. yep. You know, that, that's what that, that is the name of the game, literally playing the game, having fun. Right. And, and do you think that, has that aspect been truly lost on, on modern sports? Is that something that's. Yeah, it's too much of a, gone? it's too much of this. Um, it's taking the fun out of it. It's definitely not as fun as it was when I was a kid and not just because I was a kid, but because the players had fun. The league was having fun. Um, all the leagues were having fun, <laughs> you know? Um, and I kind of miss that, but I try to make it fun. Oh, another thing. When I go down the field now, there's these grade school kids that are always playing basketball. I came up the other day. Everybody wanted to take my picture. They're watching the show. I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, come on, take a picture with us. Come on, come on. And it was like, he goes, this guy's, I, I was just like, what the, you know, he, he, even like, and then I went out, they wanted me to shoot baskets, you know, and I go, I can't. And they go, come on. And I shot around. I made all these shots. And I had the whole class, the girls too were all cheering whenever I made a shot. I was just like, are you kidding? You know, that was really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, Bob. And yeah. I'm glad it's, it's a thing that happened to you. And I'm just dying of curiosity. Did you happen to get a chance to have some baseball talk with these stars in Pittsburgh? Yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah. I've asked, I've told um, Dave to stop playing around with the pitching staff. Stop taking them out when they're doing well. And I told him, I go, I, we were talking about the Yankee game. I go, I went, my head, my, my hat blew right off. Because, like, when they took that picture out, I knew right then. And Dave looked at me and goes, I know, I know, that was terrible. You know, like, we were, we were, we were talking, like, strategy. And it, we had so much fun. I mean, I'll talk to them. Like, Anthony's afraid to talk to them, you know, about the game, the X's and O's. But I'm not. As you know, I did with Mike Sosha. You know, we broke down pitch by pitch. So, 
Oh, that that's that that's the thing. I was at, I was thinking about that earlier today. Right. Uh, uh, literally earlier today, this afternoon. Uh, mm-hmm. How the fact that you and Mike Sosha, for, for folks listening, uh, just listening, we did have uh, Mike Sosha on uh, twice, more than once right. here, and right. in the first show, Mike Sosha and Bob. Uh, began to break down an at-bat sequence from at least 35 years ago. Am, am I right. right, Bob? 1988, Rob. Yep. We're talk. We're not just talking uh, a game, a series, a year, I mean, a season. I mean, we're talking an at-bat within a game that long ago and breaking it down and debating in a way that you, Bob, were actually able to challenge some of Mike's points. It seemed yeah. as if you both were able to learn something new together in that exchange. Right. Well, I, I know I've, I've been following it forever and I, I know it very well. Baseball I've been following since I was like five. So, you know, but what did you think when I text you um, the picture and I wrote good things happen when you drive to Pittsburgh? Uh, I, I, I let's just say I lit up like a Christmas tree. I mean, that, that, right. I, just, that, that I mean, that picture is the quintessential you, Bob. I mean, there you are in the field with the, you know, not just in on the, on Pittsburgh's field, but with the Dodger. I mean, that that's right. <laughs> classics. Right. And it right. harkens and, you know, like back to the time I was with you, Bob, when we went and met uh, Brooks Lopez's uh, father in person right. uh, down uh, hanging out with the players at the Brooklyn Nets game. I mean, we you know what? You remember that. I didn't even remember it. And Brooks playing the night for the box. And that was, I mean, that was a, a seemingly a lifetime ago, but, but Bob, we have uh, our guest, Mr. E here uh, again. He is the NHL expert of all experts. And I say that with full sincerity joining us once again, here on the sports show with Bob Spino. It is the one. The only Mr. E. Are you hey. there, sir? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Uh, my throat, my knee. Hanging in there. Yeah, I just uh, I just hacked you along before I got in here. So uh, good timing on that front. Right. Uh, could you be the, the timing, team? Mr. E. I mean, we're just really just about to dive into the NHL playoffs. So yeah. well done, sir. Are you on the ropes a little bit with Toronto? Uh, you know, uh, I got to say, I don't feel that uh, the Lightning have the it factor as much this year as, right. as the last two. Right. But I will say, you know, um, last night's game was kind of the the accidental win thing. And uh, so, you know, they, they didn't really deserve to win that game and they, they <clears> did <throat> it anyway. So like my know, friend used to say, it's cheap, but I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. A win is a win is a win. But, right. uh, you know, um, it does kind of make you think about about Toronto's first round curse. Right. Right. I mean, honestly, look, I I think what about real- Toronto's first round curse uh, mystery. Well, I mean, they uh, they haven't won a first round in like years now. Right. Uh I don't know if it dates back to 93, but 93 was their last run to the finals. Now, last year, did when they played, Mon- Montreal knocked them out, right? Yeah, Montreal knocked them out in the first That round. was first round? Yep. yep. And you know what? They were a really good team last year. And when Montreal beat them, that's when I went to Rob and said, Rob, I think they're going to go to the cup. Did I not remember that, Rob? Yes, you did, Bob. Yep. Yep. I uh, I think that um, Toronto is is very good, uh, and yes. I think they're I think they're better this year than they were last year. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think you know some of their guys are a year older and have learned some lessons, and you know some of the guys they brought in are younger and hungrier, and uh, you know um, the veteran guys that they pulled in, you know, add some add some weight to the lineup that that hasn't really factored in in this series. You know, if you look, if you look at guys like uh, Wayne Simmons and uh, Kyle Clifford, they uh, they didn't uh, get that many minutes in in this series. Um, you know, um, Clifford only got the one, only got into the one game and played like five minutes. And uh, you know, um, <clears throat> Simmons I think was averaged like seven minutes or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> he got into. So, you know, um, those guys haven't been as much of a factor. And frankly, 
they were taking a lot of stupid penalties. Um, so they, they actually ended up hurting the Leafs more than helping in this case. But, you know, still those, those veteran voices in, in the room can't, can't hurt, you know, e- even if they're not playing on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, for the Lightning, you know, it's, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much status quo, you know, um, they've managed to replace the, the third line they had last year, uh, with, with Hagel and, uh, and, uh, boy, I'm trying to blank on the other guy's name and it's funny because I like him more. Um, I, 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 I think, it happens yeah. to the best of us, Mr. E. I, I, Believe I, I me. Think, uh, anyway, I, I think Hegel's good, but I, I don't think he's really for the role they're asking him to play, right? He, he's, he was in Chicago playing first line minutes, you know, and comes to Tampa and now he's, he's sitting third line minutes in, in Tampa. And uh, it's not just the minutes thing, right? It's, it's the style of play. You know, he's, he's a puck retrieval guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, anyway, uh, uh, so are you know, expecting Toronto to win this thing in the next game? Do you think they'll win? I'm, I, I'm kind of torn, right? Cause, cause the Homer right. in me, of course, wants sure. Tampa to win. Um, but the, 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 the back to back two time defending champion, but, but yes. looking, at, looking at Toronto, you know, they just, uh, they just seem to to have the it factor to me in terms of the eye test. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm. And then again, you know, it takes just one one goal, right, to to make or break a series. And uh, you know, may, maybe the Lightning get Lightning in a bottle again, you know, um, <clears throat> and 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 come out with a win. Uh, I, I I'm really torn on this one. This this one is is too close to call. Um, you know what? Um, the one thing about hockey, it's not like other sports, because even though you have a home ice advantage or a home advantage, it's not as diverse as like basketball. Like if you're home, you win more times than not basketball. And hockey, mm, you know, the home has a slight advantage, but it's not as wide. And the road team can win at any given time. So, you know, you guys have a shot. I'm not saying you're going to win, but you have a shot. <laughs> I mean, I think these are two very good teams. These may actually be the two best teams in the playoffs, right? Right. Um, and uh, so wh- whoever wins, I think, makes the deep run out of, out of these two teams. Um, you know, so I, I think I think the next game, you know, tomorrow is is going to be uh, is going to be very interesting on that front. Um, you know, you've you've already gotten Colorado in, in the West knocking right. off. Nashville um honestly Nashville wasn't that great of a team this year so I don't I don't think that's a huge surprise and and do you think Colorado is better than Toronto no I don't okay that's interesting see I don't either I Um, I mean a a lot of the pundits do though so you know um yeah but they're always wrong I worked (laughs) at ESPN they're always wrong I get that their middle name is wrong (laughs) yeah true enough true enough um not that Colorado isn't a good team, um, but then you, you look at some of the other teams in the West, you know, um, you've got St. Louis and, and Minnesota, um, yeah. you know, and, and Minnesota got knocked off there. So, you know, St. St. Louis um, looks really good to me. I, I think, I think they're poised to make a pretty deep run. Well, they won it a couple of years ago. They beat us in game seven in Boston. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, so, you know, I I think they're poised to make a deep run and that wouldn't surprise me if they made it to the, to the cup this year. Um, you know, and and then we talk about the, uh, the Edmonton series. Um, you know, it's hard for me to take Edmonton seriously as a team. Uh, you know, even though they're, they're kind of loaded on, on offense, right. Offense. Right. David's great. But, but, you know, um, if offense were the only factor, you know, they, they would have, uh, they would have won it. Yeah. Already. Um, uh, you want to talk to me about my Bruins? Do we have any shot? Uh, I think you have a shot to win against Carolina. Oh. We haven't come close yet out there. We lost all three games. 
Well, yeah, tr true enough. But I, I also think that, that uh, Carolina is one of those overrated teams. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think if you, if, uh, if you guys can, can control, you know, going to the box and, and, you know, play some smart hockey, I think, and also start swimming, by the way, um, I, I, I think you have a pretty good shot. Um, I, I like Swayman a lot better than Allmark. Mm -hmm. we're rid of, we're, we are finally rid of Rask, which makes me happy because he drove me nuts, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah. I kind of wondered about that. Um, oh, yeah. Well, and, and they, you know, they worship him and they love him and they want to give him a day and, and I want to give him a rope. And, <laughs> you know, I, I mean. So, so let me ask you this, because uh, yeah. you probably watched more Bruins games than I have this year. Um, right. Between Olmark and Swayman, who, who do you like better? I think Swayman. I think our goalie, Swayman, I like him. I do. Yeah, I, I, I think he I think he also gives you the best chance to win. Yes. In yes. Yes. You know, and I mean, I don't know how far we'll go, but I want to keep winning, of course. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so I, I think the Rangers will, will be done. I think the Penguins are going to knock them off. Yeah, see, yeah. They lost, you know what? They lost that game at home, and it gave the Penguins the, the home ice, and it changed everything. Also, though, the Penguins – I really want to make a short play. of that uh, prediction mystery, by the way. Just putting it out there. <laughs> oh, I know. You must be hating it because I know that <clears> – <throat> Um, the Islanders had a tough year, so I know you don't want the Rangers wrong. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so is there any sort of development? Is it too early to comment on any developments that you would say are unexpected? Uh, is there anything that needs more attention in the playoffs that's, that's not getting it? Uh, you know, I, I think pretty much everything has been sort of, you know, um, called out you know, in several forms of media. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think there's really much to add to the conversation uh, that's already taking place. Um, I will say in all of the games that I've watched, um, the, the officiating has been universally terrible. Um, what else is new? <clears throat> yeah, right, right. It, it's the NHL playoffs. I expect right. him to put, well, I expect him to put the, put the whistles away. You know, I expect that to happen, but uh you know that that maybe happens more in as we get deeper uh what i don't like is the situation where you know we're basically looking at different games between the first period and the third period you know in in every series it's pretty universal um and uh e either call the game consistently or you know or don't or or just stop you know, this parade of penalties doesn't do any team any good because it doesn't really let them get a rhythm, you know, going in their lineup. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's about all I all I have to say about that. Um, you know, um, and and that has gotten talked about in the individual series. I don't know if it's been talked about like a, as a whole. Right. Well, is, is this um, is this a level of in, inconsistency that you're not accustomed to in the play NHL yeah, playoffs? Yeah. So, so the playoffs are, are generally a different game than the regular season game. You know, the regular season game is much tighter in terms of what gets called. Um, you know, it's much more strict to the to the rule book, and uh, you know, I, I just don't uh, I don't see that that level of consistency from start to finish, right? Um, and in the playoffs, you know, you typically have less penalties called, you know, the penalties that are called are generally the egregious stuff that you can't let go or the stuff, you know, that's, that's strict in the rule book with no tolerance, uh, right. you know, like delay of game for puck over glass, th things like that. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't see any recourse to fix it at this point. I think the NHL is going to have to going to have to uh, revisit it. Um, you know, sort of as they transition to the 
the second round. But, you know, le- like every every playoffs, you know, you, you do typically get more calls in the first round and then progressively less as, as the playoffs go deeper. Um, and, and part of that is the referees want to let their players play. And, and I think that's, that's one of my frustrations uh, in the Leafs Lightning series, right? Because these are great teams that I want to watch play. And to have like the second period of a game, uh, you know, have 14 minutes in penalties between the two teams you know you're, you're watching essentially half the period on power player penalty kill right so, so bob what do you what do you think about that i mean do you agree with that sentiment about uh, the disruption of the rhythm of the game and the uh, <clears throat> the well, overemphasis I mean, on the whistle that kind of thing every ref in every sport umpire in baseball you call they change games and they do it subtly it only takes one mess up especially like in basketball you make you make a call that's okay say you you call an offensive foul and the guy hits an n1 and when they show the replay you can see who's an n1 but it's going the other way so that's three points you're not getting and then they come down and hit a two or a three that's a five or six point swing and you never even think about it in the middle of the game hockey the same way they start blowing whistles how about the how about the, the goal he took away from the rangers Ranger fans are livid. It changes the whole thing. And um, it, in this case, it changed the series because they could have been up three, you know, three, two, instead of down three, two. And I mean, so yes. And umpires, they do it all the time in baseball. Strike three, inning should have been over. Ball. Next pitch, boom, three run homer, you lose. How many times do you see it? It happens. All, they are always doing it. I totally agree with you. Totally. Well, I, mean, I like to take them and rip the world out sometimes because <laughs> well, they shaft them all the time. There's, there's game management, right? right. Um, that's that's one thing, but uh, I mean, just just the constant parade to the penalty box, right? And then that that's affecting guys who either don't play power play or don't sure. play penalty kill, right? Because sure. those guys are are not getting the minutes they're used to. Uh, it, it kind of you know causes other players to have like. Uh, incredible increases in their minutes right um so you know when you're looking at the the anatomy of a game right let's say you have a defense a stud defenseman who who does say you know 20 28 minutes a game uh suddenly they're looking at 35 minutes a game right start running those kinds of minutes per game that that's the wear and tear in the playoffs that that shortens uh and that shortens runs and causes major injuries Right. Right. So, I mean, oh, go ahead, Bob. No, go ahead, Rob. Oh, I was just going to ask, Mr. E. So, if should the Lightning fall, is there a team you would like to see win besides that? Uh, probably Toronto. Uh, Got to keep it blue and white. Uh, are, are you one of those that whoever beats me, I want them to win to make me look better? Uh, generally, no. Um, g- generally, what, what happens after my team gets beaten, uh, I, I'll, I'll watch sort of as many games as I can in the next round. Uh, and I'll sort of pick the team that I like best out of, you know, what I see on the ice. Okay. But that's good. I mean, I'm not like that. See, I grew up, you beat me. I hate you guts. I hope you lose. I have no feelings for you. You're not on my team. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I am too. But you know, a lot of people today are like, well, we lose to the best team. If they win at all, I feel okay. Really? Did you feel okay the second you lost to the team? No. There, there, there are teams. There are teams. I can tell you that if 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 the Lightning got beat by them, I would never root for them. Ever. There you go. There you go. I like that. I respect it. I respect it because that's a real fan. That's what a real fan does. These wishy washy people, are like, well, they're still trying to get a win out of it somehow. How are you getting a win out of the team that knocked you out just because they win? What the? That's so weak. That's weak. It's weak. I, um, I, I'm going to base it on, on what I see on the ice. And, and from what I've seen in the first round, I, I really like Toronto. And so, you know, that's, that's who I'd probably hitch. hitch now, around. now with the Colorado have the best record. I believe they did, right? Uh, Colorado did not have the best record. They didn't. They were the best in the West. Okay. Who was uh, the best? The Toronto? best, the best, uh, no. Um, hang on. Mm. Who was it? Uh, oh, I think we stumped the, we stumped the professor. 
I want to say I want to say it was Carolina actually, but I could be wrong. Oh, don't tell me that. Well, it's okay because I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna save the day here and, and pose yeah, look, a, a look general up, question. Uh, no, no, look look it up. I I need to know. He's gonna look it up. What, what am I verifying again, Mister E? Um, uh, who had the look, best record? Look up who had the best record in, in the year. NHL this season? Yeah, I thought it was Colorado, but it's not. I know they were doing well. So I'm. It was the uh, Avalanche. It was. Best. No way. I thought it was Ooh. 20. Oh, that was since 20 something since January. No, 1st. no, no. It's uh, hang on. I'll, I'll it's uh, Florida, right? Yeah. Panthers. That's who it is. Florida Panthers. Okay. Yes. I, I, I have a blind Florida spot Panthers. about them because that's the best regular teams. season record. That's one of the teams I hate and would never follow. So, yeah. Um, I have, I have a lot of hate left after, after the. the yeah. I, I would not. I don't want to see the Panthers win either mystery, but I'm curious if, I'm curious about the individual standouts so far in the playoffs. Who are the who are the players that are really making noise early on here? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, it's it's pretty much all all the standard guys. Um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look this up because I I don't know it off the top of my head. I I am. I am really bad off this year and unprepared. I apologize. There's no That's apology okay. necessary on the sports show of Bob Spino because we just roll. It's no. okay. So no. I guess then has anyone of the non-standards stood out? You know, any names pop out that you didn't notice before that are like, whoa, this guy had hat trick this game. I mean, anything there like really, that of that really nature. There really hasn't been that many guys who, who have like, stood out you know that, that haven't stood out before no um, who started play? are they out they're playing washington um what's this, what's this series? three three oh and and the game seven's in florida it's gotta be right yeah the game seven will be in florida um washington was adam beat they they had him on the ropes yeah washington um is uh they're they're a good matchup for for the Panthers, you know, they, yeah. they fit, they fit, you know, they fit in the holes that the Panthers have in their lineup. Uh, so I, I, I like the Capitals against the Panthers really, but some of that is, is probably my bias. Um, okay. Well, you know what? I, I, the reason I asked, cause I'm, you know, I know about that president's cup and the curse. Talk cup. about curses. Yeah. The curse cup. And yeah. Yeah. The president's cup generally will will have an early exit uh yep. i mean yep. you know the the year the lightning did an incredible in the regular season right swept in four uh by columbus um you know the the year that uh i i you know i i had, can't remember the last time uh, a president's trophy winner went more than more than one round or two rounds deep yeah, that's what I'm. That's I'm trying to, you know, see when was the last time a Presidents Cup winner even you know won the cup, because uh, it's uh, completely escaping me. And I, I'm pretty sure if you uh, take a poll, most people don't know either. Because I mean, all right, so, so how long I, it's been. I'm, I'm going to run down the top ten playoff scorers uh, mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, McDavid number one, right? Marchand number two. Verhage for the Panthers, number three. Right. McCarr, number four. If you can give the teams too, because a lot of people might know. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's Colorado, right. um, and that's that's their their stud number one defender. So I'm not I'm not surprised by that. Right. And incre- he's an incredible player. So you know I'm I'm not shocked by that one at all. Um, also for Edmonton, uh, Evander Kane uh, at number five. Um, and then we've got, and then we've got, uh, David Perron, um, not sure who's he, who he's playing for this year, actually. Um, I will find that St. Louis. Um, and then we have Crosby at number seven. for Pittsburgh. We know who he plays for. Yeah. Right. Right. Also for Pittsburgh, uh, Gensel, um, I think he's a bit underrated as far as a player, as far as a player to go. Go. Yeah. Um, Kaprizov from Minnesota um, is is number nine, and uh, Ryan O'Reilly for St. Louis is number ten. 
I got a question. We the, the Bruins drafted a a player that this is going to be the next Gretzky in their farm system. How good is this kid? Uh, give me score. a name. Uh, give me a name. I I, I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I know I everybody jumps. Of, and says by the be- way, since 1985, guys, the President's Cup winner has only won the Stanley Cup eight times. Wow. Wow. And it hasn't happened since the Chicago Blackhawks did it uh, back in 2012-13 season. So it, came, it just highlights been... how <clears throat> wild and volatile the NHL playoffs you know, actually are. And in case anybody doesn't know what that is, it's the best record. They give it the President's Cup. So, Yeah. Um, so uh, do you have a name for me on, the, on that player? Um, no, I read it really quick. And, and they uh, said, this guy's like amazing. Let He's me, an amazing player. First round draft pick, I, I would guess. Yeah, I think so. All right, let me just take a look at the last couple of years of, of first round draft picks. Right. Um, 2021, uh, LaSalle. Does that sound familiar? Mm. Uh, didn't have one and didn't have a first rounder in 2020. Um, then that might, be, that might be him. Beecher in, in 2019. Um, Axel Anderson in 2018. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm not real familiar. Um, I, I would say that the scouting reports I've, I've read on most of these draft picks um, don't indicate a high level. Right. Like that. But you know what? Um, There's but, always but, writers that will compare you to somebody who's legendary. Oh, whether you course, are or not. Because that's what sells. That's what right, sells right. magazines. Well, or, oh, you know what, though? Views. Honestly, I think it's something different. I think it's people's lack of knowledge in sports that they compare it to things that they think are right. Like they do this in the NBA all the time. There's nobody that ever lived except Jordan and LeBron, you know? Sure. So, yeah. you, you know, I mean, they forget there's been great stars through the years and um, the younger kids don't know because they, they, they weren't brought up sports fans. A lot of these kids are analytics kids. They don't know. And they don't, they never watch the damn game to see who's really good. They never use their own eyesight. They, they read stats. So they don't realize who is really good and who isn't and who you can compare it to. I can do it in a minute. I kid you not. I can look at a guy one time and go, him, he's a great one. Him, he's a joke. You know? Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe uh, swing over to, uh, yeah. to the prospects camp this year for Boston and, and see who, who looks good. Um, oh. Okay, Rob, what happened to the Islanders this year? Well, well, before we get into that, guys, uh, <laughs> before we jump into that swamp uh, yep. mess, uh, yeah, right. uh, I'm just curious from, bo- about bo- from both of you. Mm-hmm. What is your kind of, you know, and I generally ask this question to everyone. What is your state of the union address when it comes to hockey? What's the state of hockey? I know they got the new TV deal with ESPN. Uh, is the league prospering? Is it growing? retracting what's going on as a whole when it comes to NHL. Uh, if you want me to start, I, I can do that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say that uh, the league has expanded as far as they want to expand for right now. Right. They, they added Seattle. Um, and uh, you know, we, we saw that the talent pool diluted a little bit um, you know, when, when the, uh, when we added Seattle, sure. Um, you know, it's it's been that way with expansion for for a long time, and I think that you know uh, it, it takes time for the farm systems to sort of stabilize after that, and and for the developmental systems, you know, to stabilize after that to to produce the the, the next stars. Um, it's not that there isn't the talent in the world, right? There, there's definitely enough talent in the world. It's just getting that talent playing hockey, getting that talent, you know, um, developed enough to be NHL players. Um, that's that's a long road. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it starts from the time kids are like, uh, you know, 15, 16 years old, and it runs up, you know, pro- probably, you know, it, it depends on position, but you're, your forwards typically are, are going to be sort of around NHL ready at 21 defensemen, maybe 23 goaltenders, maybe 25, you know, that's, that's the realistic projection on it. And if you get guys 
in, into those roles earlier, you know, that, that means they've had sort of, uh, um, they, they've had more skill to develop in the first place. Um, so, you know, there is a lot to be said for late bloomers too, um, that, that can definitely help. But, you know, um, to me, that's, that's what the state of, of the, that's what the state of things looks like, right? You're, you're gonna have to look for more talent pools to find the next guys. Um, you know, and there's only a finite number of talent pools in the world, right? We're going to have to start looking in, in other non-traditional places like, you know, pro probably the, the Asian markets and probably, you know, um, and probably, um, you know, may maybe even start finding those, those rough assets at, at earlier ages, um, you know, and, and, you know, 90% of those guys are, are going to flame out, you know, 95% of those guys are going to flame out before they ever get to the NHL. Um, so, so I, I think the league is healthy. I think revenue is growing. Uh, I think last year's kind of a, um, Last year is kind of a, an overstatement of, of revenue um, because, because of the fact that you had Seattle coming in as, as an expansion team. Uh, so you had, you had the monies from, from the expansion team coming in. Um, and uh, I, I think, you know, the, the other thing to look at um, is, is salary cap down the line because salary cap is tied to revenue in the NHL. And um, it's projected to grow at least as far as, as, as I know for the next three years. Um, so, I mean, that, that kind of shows that they're where the NHL is expecting revenues to go. Yeah, I mean, hockey's fun. I mean, actually, to me, it's still like the pure sport. It really hasn't changed all that much because you're, you're messing up everything in other sports with the rules and all. But I'm not a big fan of expansion. Because it's like diluting things. I mean, and, you know, there's, there's less good – the more roster spots you have, the less good players you, you got to fill it with in any sport. Like, everybody's like, oh, well, there's a lot of teams now, and the old teams would never have won. Yeah, but the best players were in the leagues because there's only so many roster spots to fill. You didn't have all these extra bench players that aren't that good, you know, sitting on your – you know, hardly playing. So, I think I, – I, I never liked that. I never liked – too many teams making the playoffs. I think that's not fair. If you stink during the season, you shouldn't be in it. Um, this and, was actually a point of contention, Bob, uh, the last uh, time we had Mystery and E. Kip on. Right. Um, well, I mean, what I'll say is I, I think where the NHL is now is good because you're talking about half the league makes the playoffs and half doesn't. Half? Okay. It's, it's but you 50, know what? 50. Look, there, there's – eight teams in each conference in basketball that make it. I think only four should make it. And you know what? Well, look, the top four are in it. So to, to make mean, to make the playoffs this year in the NHL, you had to have over a hundred points in the standings in the East. Like if you know typically that range historically has fallen around 95 points, you know, to, to be that cutoff in the number eight seed. Um you know, so, so, I mean, if what that really shows, I, I think is, is a couple things, right? So one thing is the NHL has the loser point and that needs to not happen anymore. You know, that is, that is a, a, a terrible thing uh, because essentially you're, you're adding an extra point to the standings. So if you go to overtime, you're talking about a three point game instead of a two point game, right? With, two points going to the victor and one going to the loser. I, I, I think, I think that's, that's kind of, um, that skews the point totals higher. And the other thing that, that has such a high point total shows uh, is that you have equally far down to go for the bottoms, right? You have, so you have worse teams at the bottom, you know, and uh, you have either more of them or, you know, the ones that are at the bottom are, are, terrible teams right and right. uh you know I, I mean yeah sometimes injuries comes into play with that and, and whatnot but right you know um 
But bottom line is, if, if you don't have the lineup to win games, you're not going to get the, the points in the standings, you know, and uh, you have to win bottom line. And unfortunately, the Islanders did not win uh, this year. I think we just and jumped in the swamp. If uh, <laughs> if if uh, Ekip was here, I, I think he would relay what he's been telling Mr. E and I for the past couple of weeks and, and well, months now. And that's the Islanders have aged. I mean, the opportunity was was there. And unfortunately, these seasoned long-term vets just, I mean, you slow down. And I agree with that point from him. And I, I look at the situation as more of a roster issue. But unfortunately, from my standpoint, firing the coach was a big mistake. I mean, I don't well, you do that wrong. Last time the Islanders went to back-to-back Eastern Conference Finals, I mean, I believe it was, I don't know, the back-to-back, maybe during the streak when they won the the four – the four in a row, but uh, the last time they were in the Eastern Conference Finals alone has been years. And to, to, to make this firing after this one season, I think is a rash move that I hope does not uh, turn out to be uh, a long-term exactly. problem for the franchise. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't you know. Guys, think, what do you guys think, think about think the firing back, of the Islanders coach? Well, th- think back to Lou Lamorello's time in, in New Jersey, right? He hmm. was quick to fire coaches in New Jersey. He would right. fire. He he fired a couple of coaches during winning seasons, to to bring in a guy that he thought was gonna was gonna put them over the top for the playoffs. Um, you know he he's not a guy that sticks to coaches. Um, and, and on the flip side of that, right, if the Islanders are looking to get younger, you know, um, that coach is not the guy to do it. You know, his his reputation is that he. He doesn't develop players well. He oh doesn't, boy, he doesn't. Well, he, uh, you know what the deal is with that? If you're this close, and I, okay, you're getting older, but you go for it until you get it. And, and look, if you get too old, then obviously you got to break them up. But why would you change in midstream when you've got you're so close to winning it all? I mean, that to me, I understand Lou did it with the Devils, but he also had Rodor the whole time. So he can do it with a lot of did that makes for a big and they had a great defense that makes yeah. that whole time that makes for a big difference. You know, I mean, you can't even play that kind of D no more because it's illegal. That little trapping stuff they used to do. But I mean, when you're that close, Rob, I don't I would not give up. And if what, you know, um, you're saying is true, you know, this guy don't develop. Why would you do it with the young kids? I mean, I don't get it. Look, I understand Lou is great, but Belichick's great, too. But he can't win now without Brady. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know about that, you know. The thing is, Trotz, Trotz is an incredible defensive coach, right? right. He's great at coaching defenses. Um, the problem is he's not great at developing young players. He's not great at, at giving young players ice time over aging veterans. And, and, you know, I, I think, you know, the Isles decor at this point is, is on the young side. So I, I, think that, I, I think that, you know, they either weren't adapting to his lessons or weren't being brought along in, in a way. Um, and uh, so uh, as, as, as Lou has a proclivity for, for defense and goaltending, if he doesn't feel the coach is going to be able to bring – the guys along that that need to develop for the team to get to that next level you know what i mean so as a non-biased figure in all this do you yeah. believe this move will pay dividends for the islanders or they will suffer for it they will suffer in the short term mm-hmm. no doubt in my mind because the, there isn't a lot of of depth um you know that there isn't a lot of a lot of young players coming up through their system, um, and uh, the older guys, frankly, are, aren't getting it done anymore. So, uh, lo- looking at it that way, um, y- you really can't commit to the ways of the old. So you've got to go with the newer, younger players, and that means you've got to trade some roster guys out to get younger. Um, and you've got to put in a coach that's going to that's going to be able to teach those players. For what it's worth, I don't think Trotz is going to be unemployed for long. I think he's going to find a job somewhere else. 
you know, with, with a veteran lineup that's looking to win. All right. So long-term hope I'll, I'll be able to sleep at night now. How about you, Bob? Was it the right move? Um, well, you guys had a lot of problem. I mean, COVID started the whole thing and then, you know, um, did to you agree since you had him? Sounds like it's to be determined, right? No, to no, be no. determined, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, you had him, no. I mean, you haven't yet. Um, and like I said, whenever you're that close, Rob, you got to go for it at least one more time. You know, I mean, I don't like just abandoning the ship, you know, so. So it doesn't appear uh, as if Tony's going to be able to make it tonight, uh, gentlemen. So, yeah. uh I, I do hope to get Tony on with you, Mr. E and uh, E Kip sometime again during the playoffs, but I'm just wondering, uh, not picking a winner. Let's get a score prediction for mm -hmm. the Maple Leafs lightning uh, finale. Uh, I'm going to stick with the same score from game six and that's four, three, four, four three. three. I'm hoping for overtime. Cause I live for, for NHL overtime in the playoffs. Which looks like it's going to happen with Penguins tonight. It's 3-3 at the very end of the third period. So um yeah, there's been no there's been no series with uh, that that will have completed with a single game victory, I believe. Right. Uh, at least two um, games and one in every series. I'm thinking four to two, Rob. Maybe five to two with an open net at the end. Oh no, the Rangers scored. They did. With 42 uh, seconds left, Penguins got to no. tie that up. Get it done, boys. Come on. Oh, man. You know what? If it goes back to New York, Penguins are going to have a tough time. A real tough time. Um, so with that, uh, Mr. Reed, do you want to come back on before the playoffs are up to you know, maybe cover conference finals, uh, cup finals, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in for, for any anytime you need me. I'm in. All right. So, yeah. So we're, we're resuming the fr Friday uh, recurring episodes. Mr. E, is there anything else to impart to the audience about the NHL playoffs or the hockey uh, sport of hockey in general? Uh, just have fun with it, guys. No matter what happens, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun time to be watching the game. All right. Four, three, you heard it here, folks. Prediction, final score, regardless of winter, Maple Leaves, Lightning. Uh, Bob, let's get your final score prediction on Leaves Lightning. Um, I'm thinking four two at the end of the game, and then an open net, make it five to two. Leaves the Leaves. Oh, you're per you're picking a winner. Yes, okay. I I'll, I'll I'll go contrarian then, and I'll pick Lightning. Might as well go Homer. Uh, oh, I, I the Lightning have one back to back. It, it's getting a little too close for comfort for me in terms of the four uh, year dynasty. So I'm going with Leaves. 3-1. And there you have it, folks. Mr. E, join us once again. Bob, anything else to share with the audience before we close shop? Yeah, and you stole my wide receiver, Kansas City. You're um, welcome. But, yeah. And somebody said the other day that um, um, they tried to throw a, a pass to him and he um, to under threw him by 30 yards. I guess that's true. So, um, but I want you to know you're going to be like, if you're unlucky, I saw the schedule, seven and 10. If you're lucky, you're eight and nine. I think the Jets will beat you once. Just throwing once. out predictions left and right for the NFL yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, Bob. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're going to be – 30 yards, hearsay teams, stories. Okay. My two teams are going to be uh, – the Chiefs are going to be like 14 and three or 13 and four, and the same with the Bills. I do think – I heard that the Bills called Carolina about McCaffrey, and they wanted three first-round picks. Buffalo said, no, you're crazy, Bills. You can always buy your way back into the first round like the Jets did. So, you know, uh, I do it. But that's my prediction on that. Okay, I don't agree at all. I'm, I'm very doubtful of this <laughs> under – you said underthrown by 30 yards thing going on? What? That's what they said. That's what I Oh, that's what they said. Who's, who's this they, Bob? I don't know who they are. But I like, 30, 30 I like, yards? Under the like <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna hold, we're gonna hold that one. We're gonna hold that one on record. We're right. keeping that one posted. Thirty right. yards under right. record. Uh, folks, rejoin us. Like, share, and subscribe. You know the drill. Tony will be rejoining us again Fridays here on the Sports Show with Bob Spino, special guest stars incoming. Signing off. This is Rob. Take Bob. care, folks. Take care, everybody. <laughs>